Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, we are getting so close to the start of kickoff. I just went to the you know Red Raider Club luncheon, kickoff luncheon, where they celebrated, and rightfully so, the best like scholastic or school year of Texas Tech sports in the history of the university. Um, it was pretty amazing. The, of course, the one program that didn't enjoy the best success basically of all time was football. And that's what's, you know, one of the sports that, that's kicking off in, in just a ha couple of handfuls of days now. I mean, I think by the time actually you see this, it will be single digits for, for kickoff. So just your thoughts on, we didn't really get much of a breather, but before we get in this mailbag, your thoughts on what was the best scholastic year of Texas Tech sports, and then just look ahead real quick to, to football kicking off. Yeah, it's um, pretty pretty unforgettable, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, obviously I was kind of more invested in basketball mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, being able to make the trip mm -hmm. uh, all over the place, everywhere except Anaheim. You went to Anaheim, right. uh, Tulsa, Minneapolis, Final Four, down there on the floor. Yeah. It was, you know, it's the stuff of, uh, you know, of a lifetime there, yeah. you know. And uh, the thing is, I mean, you multiply that times, I don't know, what is the, the Texas Tech fan base? Is it in the millions? Is it a million yeah. people? I don't know. I Certainly mean, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. You multiply it like that. And so that's what people are feeling, you know, that, that incredible experience and um, all these memories. So uh, very, very special. And uh, now it's time for football to carry its part of the, the load. And uh, we're going to find out uh, pretty soon how soon that's going to happen. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to dive into your questions. All right. We're going to start off with your favorite subject, Red Raider basketball. We have one from Ryden Fearless who wants to know, after seeing the games in the Bahamas, are you either one, more excited, two, less excited, or three, you have about the same amount of excitement as before? One, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I know they lost two of the three games, but uh, that's inconsequential to me. Uh, those freshmen are better than I thought they were going to be. I mean, uh, Shannon, I was right about Ramsey, wasn't I? You, were, you <laughs> sure were. You sure were. He's one of them that is better than I thought he was going to be. Shannon is another one who is yeah. quite a bit better than I thought he was going to be. Yeah. Uh, I think Chewa is going to be, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, at least he has a chance of helping out this year. I don't know for sure, but he's he's got that possibility. Nadolny. Is better Good. than than I, th yeah. I thought he was going to be, and and uh, we had sort of an inkling, sure, based upon that one practice we got to see that you know maybe uh, there's something going on with him, and yes, there is. So, uh, yeah, uh, these those those guys are really going to be um, very special and uh, above and better than we expected, and because of that, I think this team uh, has the potential to be. Um, Certainly, every bit as good as it's cracked up to be. People are saying two or even, in a worst case scenario, three in the conference. Uh, and they'll be every bit of that. Uh, once they get it all put together, uh, they're going to be very, very good. Yeah, I, I think for me, I guess it'll be option three. I'm the same as, as before. I was very excited before the Bahamas, and I still am. Like you said, the outcomes of some of the games didn't diminish uh, like my hopes or my excitement for the team. I actually got to speak with Kirby Hoka about the team and everything. He was there in the Bahamas for five days. Can't blame him for taking that trip, right? Uh, and he said just that, you know, he just confirmed what I thought. Great group of kids, great chemistry they're building right now. And as he said, Chris Beard's going to do what he does. So uh, I'm really excited. Ramsey is, is, is as advertised, which is the, you know, has been billed as the most talented, perhaps the most talented player ever recruited at Texas Tech. Uh, and, you know, I think he showed off that ability. Um, Shannon, like you said, yeah. He, he, he's a hoss. He's just a, a star waiting to happen. Whether it's this year or next year, I don't know. But the guy, he's a, he's a, he's a star. Uh, and uh, Nadoni, like you said, I mean, after talking to his coach, watching some of his tape, I was like, I couldn't believe what a get Tech was getting. And this is like the least heralded guy, perhaps, that we were talking about. Um, so there was some inkling of him uh, through the grapevine and talking to some experts around the country who had seen him, especially on the East Coast. Uh, this guy was a baller. And then you just look at who his top three were, uh, you know, his top three was, what he came down to was Iowa State, West Virginia, and Tech. And that tells you really all you need to know about him. So, but then seeing what he did in the Bahamas, him being basically unguardable in penetration was, you know, just confirmation. I think it, for me, it was confirmation. I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, you actually feel more excited about him. Yeah. All right, next question comes from Juice Box, who wants to know which non-coordinator position coach, which position coach are we most interested in seeing 
in action this year. I guess he means his like his players. Yeah. Because I mean, I, other than seeing him rah, going crazy on the sideline, <laughs> I don't know, you know, because they're like we won't, we probably won't get much access to practice, which I think is the same around the country. And but uh, as far as seeing their guys perform, what do you think, Joe? Uh, DeAndre Smith's running backs, uh, because I mean, I think that's. Uh, uh, well, that's going to be kind of the, the the key to the team to me. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, is is what develops that running back position, uh, and it's not uh, that doesn't all fall on the coach. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the buck stops with the coach. <laughs> it's yeah. the way it works in the business, right? Sure. You know, so he gets credit uh, if those guys step up and exceed expectations, and if they don't, then uh, you know uh, the 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 gimlet eye is going to turn on him. So. Uh, those are the guys that I want to see and uh, see how they develop and uh, see if maybe somebody steps forward to really take command of that position. You know, you got a few yeah. guys in there right now that seems to be, I'm not sure there's a real clear rotation or, or set of, uh, you know, um, I don't know, a protocol for who's going to play what snaps in the most right now, although they're certainly getting to the point where they're figuring that out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but right to the, to the, if you're not on the inside, if you're not in the rooms listening to the coaches right. and looking at the film, uh, it's a little bit of a crapshoot from the outside. So running back is the position to me that I'm really looking at. Yeah, I'm going to go with Paul Randolph, the defensive line coach. He's one of my uh, favorite new coaches, great personality. Every recruit seems to love him. Um, he's been described by some of the veterans like Broderick Washington as just being the same every day and, and bringing the same energy, which is kind of a cliche you hear, but they said, we really mean it. I really mean it. Like this guy, he said he'll break out in a sweat just talking to you because he gets so animated and he's all over the place. And uh, another thing is, is that he'll he'll run from position drill to position drill. Nick McCann told me, and that he said he can actually still run for an older man. You know, Paul Randall's been around. He's coached like Alabama. He was a defensive line coach before. You know, he, he's he's done some things in this business. Uh, but he's you know he's older. He's with experience. You're older, and so he always tells him, I should never beat y'all from drill to drill or, you know, there's going to be repercussions. Mm -hmm. and, and Nick McCann being a 300 pound nose, ta nose guard, he said, man, I got to go, yeah. you know, like I got to like save some energy to run from drill to drill. So coach doesn't beat me, you know? So that's the kind of energy he brings. I think the defensive line uh, has some talent, but maybe a change in some philosophies and how they attack opposing offensive lines um, and not being so re uh, reserved, be getting to be more aggressive. And with a coach who's experienced and has that energy can pay some, some big dividends. Next question comes from X Saddle Tramp, who wants to know which two or three players can Tech at least uh, Tech least afford to lose besides Alan Bowman, which of course is a good important caveat yeah, there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. You already mentioned running backs. Any of the three running scholarship running backs, I think, would be my first pick, uh, whether it be Sarada Thompson, Tejon Henry, or uh, Armand Shine. Yep, that's that's very good. Uh, I would the three guys that I would throw out, maybe a little bit more obvious than that, really. Uh, Broderick Washington. He's your best player. Yeah. You know, you can never afford to lose your best player and at a critical position like defensive tackle, uh, where that's that's one of the areas where Tech will have an advantage against just about everybody they yeah. play. Uh, you don't want to lose that advantage. Yeah. Uh, sticking on defense, uh, I'm going to say Adrian Fry. Absolutely. Uh, assuming, and we are hearing positive things about him picking up safety and, and, oh, and taking great. that like a duck to water, yeah. uh, then uh, that's that's big. That's huge. Uh, he's, a, he's a very, very talented player. He's a guy who can make plays, get you some turnovers and stuff like that. Uh, and, I mean, I know you feel a little bit differently, but, I mean, I'm not completely sold on Coleman at safety yet. I mean, I know he's an experienced guy, but, you know, we'll just have to see uh, in the depth there. Adam Beck, uh, you know, you think can be a good guy. I know they got some other guys. Leggett. That, Leggett, things. yeah. Uh, but overall the safety position is a little bit of concern for yeah. me and he's the key piece yeah. back there yeah. you don't want to lose him maybe the key piece to the entire secondary uh yeah. or even the the back seven if you want to look at it that right. way all right and then uh going back to the offensive side uh vasher tj vasher uh because i mean among your skill position guys who has proven that he can make big plays against big 12 caliber competition other than I mean, bowman right other than bowman yeah right that's, I mean, it's basically Vasher, you know, uh, and so you just, you can't afford to lose that. Uh, and, um, you know, he's coming off a little bit of an injury and so he, he's getting healthy and everything. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, you, you don't want him to relapse and have another injury. I'm a little bit concerned uh, with depth at receiver. I know you've been saying some good things and I've been hearing some good stuff, but to me, uh, sure. defensive back and receiver are both a couple of positions where 
I do have some concerns about depth, and so you don't want to lose uh, your star outside receiver and reduce the depth. Absolutely. And just on, in regards to Fry and Coleman and safety, I was very skeptical at first. Till I, I, I don't know, between spring and fall camp, I don't know, eight practices maybe, maybe even more than that. Uh, I synced it with my own eyes, mm -hmm. not just somebody telling me. Uh, Fry at safety, I'm really excited about it. I, I was skeptical. Like, why are you moving your best corner to safety? I get it now. Uh, you're putting what, arguably your best player, one of your top three to five best players, in the middle of your defense, kind of captain, captaining that secondary. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it makes sense once you see it. It really does. And I think after people see the first couple games, they'll be like, okay. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Season 44 has a gambling question. Now, don't hold me to this. You put money on it and I'm wrong, then oh, that's too bad, you know? Uh, and for the record, I, not that I gamble a whole lot anyways, but I never bet on teams that are kind of close to, that I'm close to, that I care about, that I root for or whatever, uh, or that I cover, obviously. Uh, Texas Tech minus 21 versus Montana State in the opener. Do you take that bet and which way do you take it? Um. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't do a whole lot of gambling either. So, right. no, I don't take the bet. But uh, We have many vices, but gambling, yeah. thankfully. Not. <laughs> Every other vice yeah. just about, <laughs> except for that one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to take tech on that. Um, and maybe not by a large margin, yeah. uh, but I do think uh, tech will probably cover that. I mean, it's just it, it can sort of go both ways. I mean, the guys, obviously, first game for the new coach, new regime, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. home opener. I mean, there's... There's pressure that comes along with that, and sometimes teams respond positively to pressure. Sure. Sometimes they don't. Uh, Montana State has nothing to lose. They'll be loose, uh, right. come in and just let it fly. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say that the, the Red Raiders uh, do respond well to that pressure and uh, put forth a pretty good effort and probably win the game by eh, close to four touchdowns. If I were a gambling man then I and I wasn't covering Texas Tech, I would take Texas Tech, given the points. All right, Raider Fan 01 wants to know, how has uh, football season ticket sales gone to date, and what's our take on the enthusiasm of the fan base going into the season opener? I actually just earlier this week got an update from Kirby Hokut. I got to correct, he actually said 47,000 sold, which I was like, dang, that's pretty good, right? Uh, but it was actually 37. Uh, actually, Texas Tech called me. It was like, uh, we misspoke, basically. Uh, so I, I put corrections on the board and everything, but... I just want to be clear, there's 37,000, which sounds about right, honestly. He said um, it's about 2,500 less than it was last year, but very consistent with years when they don't have UT or OU coming to town. I mean, you look at the home schedule, what, Oklahoma State, TCU, Kansas State. I mean, even the, the, the Power 5 non-conference game is away. So I, there's just not – there's not like that opponent where you can look at like, oh man, I can't wait to go to that game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to see Oklahoma State and Kansas State and all, you know, TCU, but it's not, it just doesn't have that pop, that sizzle that like a UT, OU, or the other power conference. Maybe, yeah, yeah. In terms of enthusiasm, yeah, I think it's down. I think uh, the fan base has been beaten down by the lack of success on, on the gridiron. I mean, if you look at, I'm not going to go over all the, the problems again that we've had to in the past. You know it. Your tech fans, you're watching this, you know, you know the poor product that's been on the field in the last several years, uh, and sp especially at home. So there is not a lot of enthusiasm. I, enthusiasm. I think uh, the athletic program has done a really good job of trying to promote uh, the, the new coaching staff and introduce the new coaching staff, but it wasn't a splashy hire anyway. I don't care what you say. I like Matt Wills. I mean, it's obvious that I'm a fan of what's going on there so far, what, I, what we've seen. Uh, but it, it's not especially higher. It just wasn't. So for the rest of the sports, which I think is kind of helping football even a little bit, enthusiasm's never been higher. But everybody, if you talk, if you're at the bar, if you're at a restaurant, whatever, with your buddy, tech buddy, you say, oh, and then there's football. I mean, everybody has that. Are we going to be any good? So everybody asks me, are we going to have any chance? How many, you know? And everybody, nobody, everybody's skeptical. If you try and talk good about the team, it's like, oh, I've heard this before. I'm not, you know, and I don't blame fans for feeling that way, Joe, right. to be honest. Yeah. All right, well, great stuff from you as always. Great questions from you, and until next time.